We got uh, Cousin Vinny in the studio. That's right. Cousin Vinny Agnello. Used to be the Blink King. He used to be a uh, male exotic stripper. Used to do all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, a little and bit. He's got a book out called The Devil's Glove and a lot of book signings coming up. So, so we left off, if folks don't know where we left off, if they weren't here for the 745 segment, we talked about all the other stuff you did. Stripping and all that Acting. Kind of stuff. Acting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when did the transformation take place? I mean, how did it take place? Well, it actually took place uh, one, one, back in 1991 before I ever begot, went on the road to be the, uh, the notorious stripper king. I, I had this vision. I'm like in this, uh, I just got done being with one of my little lady friends. Okay, and, uh, nice. I was like in a half, Chicks. you know, right? I was like half, uh, half awake. And this uh, messenger shows up in this, I'm like, what in the world is this? No, and then, were you almost like were you? I was ready sober. to fall asleep. I was completely pinned sober. I was yeah. about on, on the verge of falling asleep. Okay. And this guy tells me to watch this movie, and then I'm going to write this story. He show, plays this incredible story in front of my eyes. What guy? He's a white-haired guy. I don't <laughs> know. He Whitey. Was, he, Whitey. Don't ask me. It's, I know it sounds insane, but um, he says it's my job to. To spread this story, so I'm out here propagating it, okay? Um, was it God? I don't know. It was certainly not. I can tell you one thing. It certainly wasn't the devil because I don't think the devil would uh, so he, propagate something that he wasn't successful at. Right. He wanted you to do good. Yeah. Okay. And, and I guess he must have thought that I could propagate this thing and you know i and then later on i would create this public mystique with the controversy with janine pirro and everything right. we, we need a mystique when are we gonna get we a real, public we mystique? really do it's time we're overdue we'll talk for to mystique. Vinny about getting a mystique when did you get shot oh that happened after i uh i got scammed by the people who own subway restaurants up in milford connecticut now, wait, out of wait, a how, franchise. Did, how did it involve a uh, big pun you didn't you have any- i had big puns Big Pun's uh, bling, yeah. That you, was, you that bought was, it from him? Yeah, it was part of being the king of bling, you know. Yeah. It was a big show-off back then. Let's not talk about that. He's not that. a player. He just crush a lot. You know, you yeah. know uh, the fact of the matter is... But they shot is, you to steal the, the, the... Well, I don't think... No, I think they shot me to send a message to shut my mouth about uh, talking about uh, this um, lawsuit that got I it. have against Subway restaurants. Got so, I got gotcha. you. All right. Um, but what I've done here is simple as this, is that I've been able, I've give, been given an opportunity because of my notorious reputation to transform notoriety into this nationwide opportunity to spread these decent Christian values to a nation that's really standing on the edge of moral decay. And the I mean, iron, the moral decay is obvious in the studio here. You oh, can, absolutely. Yeah, you can I look at you guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously. But the irony of being the former stripper king of New York and now becoming a beloved Christian author are what legends are made of. And the Bible is filled with these stories of individuals with less than above board pasts who've had epiphanies or guidance from otherworldly sources. And this story, I said, came from one of these source, sources. And um, it is a, uh, it's a story that uh, it... Because I was given a unique opportunity through my crazy life as Stripper King uh, to see the dark side of life, I was able to weave this into the story about this uh, this kid, this Eddie Romano. He's this young major league hopeful. That's the central character in your book? Yes. The Devil's Glove. Right. Called, yeah. He finds this baseball glove in the ruins of the old Comiskey Park in Chicago. And he starts having his mysterious dreams, and he discovers that the glove holds the power to make him a success. But the price is the price of his success worth the sacrifice that he's going to have to make? And the devil's glove is all about human nature. So it's like selling your soul to the devil. Right. It, it, I, well, I follow. it's sort of like that. But you see, it's it's about human nature. It's about. Uh, you know what would we, we what would we be willing to do to have your dreams come true? Hmm. What would you be willing to be? Co- what could you be coerced to do to save your own skin? That's another question we it it, it uh, explores. It also explores the horrors of addiction, 
The glove, the devil's glove, it represents our addictions. And it will make you look at good and evil, just like me, Cousin Vinny, through a whole new perspective. Things will not be so black and white by the time you finish reading my book. And best of all... It's a lot of gray area. Yes, indeed. And best of all, it explores the price of cheating. Hey, Alex Rodriguez, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you, A-Rod. That's, Listen you know, up, butthead. And it, and it makes it relevant to today's doping scandals. Uh, Greg uh, Lamond, right? Was he, was, what, who was the bicycle guy? Yeah, was, uh, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Close. Yeah. Lance Armstrong. <laughs> him. U- Unabeam. Okay? Yeah. Cheating. Okay? It, it, it addresses these scandals, and this message came way before all of this doping and all this stuff ever took place. You're very excitable. Yeah. It, it's a very exciting thing. You turn it red. But all I can tell you guys is this, okay? If I can change the road I'm on, okay, then anybody can. Uh yeah, I mean, everybody makes bad choices, and I make I'm, a lot of them. I make a lot. You've heard yeah. some of them off the air, right? Right. Well, I'm living proof that it's never too late to change the road you're on, and that's a main theme in the book, The Devil's Glove. This book, I'm going to tell you, folks, it will save your life. It'll save your friends' life. Yeah, but you have, but you have to want to be saved. You have to want to change your behavior. Right. But the, the this messenger who came to see me. You know, basically, you know, he told me this story about it's geared to enlighten the addicted souls out there to the magic that exists inside each and every one of them. Do we each get the same messenger? What's that? Do we each get the same messenger? Is it the guy with the white hair? I want like a hot chick messenger. Uh, No, see, you don't. You're not getting this. You know, a chick that can back it up. But you're not getting. You know, drop it like it's hot. So we're we're gonna we're gonna do away with. You know, the promiscuity. Oh, why? And, and the bad habits <laughs> and the drugs <laughs> and the drinking and changing your life. That sounds awful. Well, see, you're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready. No. 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 <laughs> oh, it was Brian Dennehy. That was your messenger. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure it was. But oh, you, okay. That's... Wilford Brimley. <laughs> so, but. That's what the book is about. Yes, and most of all, what it's going, going to do, to what it will do to the for the reader is simply this. It will make you believe in God. It will lead the reader to whatever higher power they believe in. I mean, I get religious leaders come up to me all the time, and they shake my hand and say, Hey, Cousin Vin, uh, you know, thanks a lot. That's a really, really great book, and you're leading young Christians and young other people right. to whatever religion they're in, that they, or to whatever God they believe in. And, but, you know, the funny thing, because of my jaded past and checkered past, I see these people walk away and they're shaking their heads at me. And I'm like, excuse me, Reverend, why are you shaking your head? And they turn around and they say, I just can't understand how any God could have made you the messenger. Well, I sit there and I say back to him, what did you expect it to? It's going to come from the choir? It's not. It's going to come from America's right. prodigal son. And he's sitting here right before you with all the messages, all the experience. So uh, read The Devil's Glove. If you have a troubled teen out there who's having a hard time finding his way, this is the book to deliver on his uh, in his lap, okay? What about a troubled 34-year-old? Yeah. That's good, too. Yeah, okay. Right. we got to get me one but of you these. Have to, but you have to want it. Okay, you got to want it. Yeah. Like with all I don't things. know if you're there yet. No, you don't think so? No. Okay, you're doing a bunch of book signings. You look I weird. am. You look weird today. Did you take like a super hot shower? Your face is all flushed. I think uh, you need to take one of my uh, focus medication okay. pills, okay? Right. A lot of book signings. Yes. This uh, today, this afternoon, uh, Southbury Public Library at uh, 100 Poverty Road. You get to see Cousin Vin uh, expound upon the things I've talked to talked about today. Uh, I'll be there from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday. Okay. Saturday, 11 a.m. over at the, um, the Morning Star Christian Bookstore. That's over on... Uh, Newtown Road, right? and I'll be there from 11 to 3 p.m., and to not leave out my wonderful friends over at Barnes & Nobles over on 15 Bacchus Avenue, and the lovely Bonnie, the uh, community relations manager yeah. over there. What a doll. You should see Easy. her. Oh, she's, oh, she's, she's down, boy. Look she's beautiful. That. Okay. That's his anyway, messenger. Anyway, um, 
I'm going to be over there uh, doing some signings and uh, sign some books and talk to people and shake some hands and and uh, you can take some pictures. What time Sunday? What time Sunday? I'm going to be there from two to four p.m. All right, excellent. Yeah. Now, do you have any extra books? Could we grab one before you leave? Well, sure, you're going to have to purchase one, but that's yeah. not going to happen. No, no. Shut uh, down, uh, Mike. Uh, shut uh, down. Uh, my father just texted me. He said, uh, my, yeah. your messenger is going to look like my right fist. So there you go. Wow. I got I a different got, kind of messenger. I think your father's sending you a message. Big, yeah. hairy, knuckled right fist. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. The, uh, let me tell you something. This, uh, these, you, know, you think that uh, the, uh, us touring authors are getting rich. We don't make all that much right. money off of the big chain bookstores. Well, plus, you're, you're, you're sending a message. I mean, this... this We'll Sending out an SOS, if you will. Exactly. This will, It'll most likely, it, it will help. It's a tool. Well, let's put this way. When they look at the guy, the notorious stripper king in New York, who's been shot and went through the wash, rinse, and spin cycle in life, okay, and somehow he ends up on his feet like cat, a cat with nine lives and is now spreading uh, good Christian moral messages to the world, you got to ask yourself, hey, you know, I could do this. I don't have to be selling drugs down on the street right. or pimping and pandering. I okay? got you. Or robbing stores. Pimping ain't easy whatever. either. You know, hey, pimping know. ain't easy. You I know. know. Nah, not with Janine Pirro's DA. Easy. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> we have to uh, wrap it up because we, uh, we, we have to go. We thank you for coming in. Yeah, man. thank you. It's an we interesting it. story. The Devil's Glove is the name of the book. I haven't been shot yet. I think I got to get shot. Yeah, you know? it's not fun. No, no, you're not ready yet. No, 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 no. Vinny, thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. God really bless y'all. Appreciate it.